I did my time. I honored my agreement with Charles. I stayed home. I raised our kids. Jen went off to college and I joined the workforce. It was high time. And yes, I signed on for the stay at home mom part. Our family needed an anchor and I was it, but I never signed on for the stay at home empty nester wife part, maybe in Charles Baker's dreams. I don't regret having been a stay at home mom for the most part. In a lot of ways, I was lucky. I got to be with my kids through their highs, their lows, their triumphs and defeats. I was there. I mean, their father may have been a bit absent, but I certainly wasn't. And I'm proud that I stayed home for them. A lot of my friends can't say the same. And although they'd be loath to admit it, I know many of them envied me. And their kids definitely envied my kids. Carl and Jen turned out great. Hello, parents. The reason we have them is to raise them ourselves. And Charles, to his credit, is a wonderful provider. He always has been. And as stubborn and pig-headed as he is, he's a loving father. He is a good man. Has a bit of a romantic streak, that husband of mine. Still knows how to sweep me off my feet. Hey, we lead very comfortable lives, but a beautiful home and exciting vacations and shiny presents do not compensate for that nagging sense of untapped potential, of dreams unrealized, a lack of accomplishment not having made a mark outside the home. I am so much more than Mrs. Charles Baker. Yeah, Emily's friends had big careers when they were raising their kids. So they looked down on Emily, they judged her, they made some snide comments. Never mind, they neglected their kids. That's why their kids are all screwed up now. Yeah, but thank God for prescription drugs. You know, child rearing's hard work. Meds are easy, right, ladies? <laughs> Forget it takes a village. It takes a pharmacy. Look, Emily did the honorable thing. She stayed home with her family. A and we have two wonderful kids to show for it. You know, being a mom and homemaker used to be a, a woman's highest calling, the uh, bedrock of the American family. Oh, then women's lib came along, and, and these feminists wanted to be just like men, with the haircuts and all. So they declared war on nature, their own nature. And the rest of us, American society, what did we get in return? <sighs> Broken homes, failing schools, two, three generations of kids completely scarred. Thanks for the plunging test scores, ladies. The unskilled workforce, the drug abuse, the delinquency, and the crime. You know, this is good. You take mothering out of the parenting equation, you know what you get? Greatest country known to mankind on a suicide mission. Charles resents that I have a career, period. It threatens him. I earn a good income, whereas before I was completely dependent on him for money. All the other lawyers in his firm, their wives work. Always have. It's a given, with or without kids. Charles may be in his 50s, but his mindset is like a man in his 90s. It's as if this whole watershed of change that swept across this country since the 1960s completely passed him over. Charles believes that a woman exists to tend to her husband, to meet his every need, to be at his beck and call. It's Charles and Tammy Wynette singing Stand By Your Man. Instead of supporting my professional pursuits, instead of applauding my success, he belittles me tells me I'm selfish. I'm making some sort of a statement. Damn right I am. Charles tells me that I should quit my job and take up a hobby. Join a book club, perhaps, or a knitting circle. After all, a full-time PR professional can't be Mrs. Candidate for Mayor of Naperville 24-7, can she? No. You see, I've shifted focus on him. I've changed the subject from Charles to Emily. My daughter Jen. She belongs to the first generation ever of American women that will out-earn and out-accomplish their male peers. Law school, med school, business school, that's where the girls are now. Now, oh, maybe as her father I should be heartened by that fact. Happy that my little girl belongs to the first generation ever that relegates its men to second place.
Hell, maybe it's just our turn, guys. Maybe the women will do a better job than we did. I say nonsense. You want to castrate the American male? You want to devalue and vilify our boys, crush their spirits? Be careful what you wish for, ladies. There are reasons our bodies are different. My wife, Emily, she wants to outdo me. Yep, she's taken her cues from Jen's generation, it appears. Well, she denies it, but I know competition when I see it. And when a wife competes with her husband, it's the family that loses. Charles has this whole litany of reasons he loves to recite about why to not like Muslims. And he's always sure to slip in the oppression of Muslim women. My husband is very concerned about Muslim women, you see. In fact, he loses sleep worrying about the women of Islam. Look at those Muslim men, the way they try to lock up their women at home. They're barbarians! Really, Charles? What about the wife you want to keep locked up at home? And what about all of these oppressed Muslim women in Naperville? They're super educated professionals, role models, out and about without a shackle in sight. But that's not what Charles sees, oh no. He sees angry brown men trying to control and oppress burqa-clad women folk. I'm surprised he hasn't converted. Uh, sometimes I think maybe the Muslims are right. Maybe they're better attuned to nature than we Americans are. Now, I remember this conversation I had with this Muslim guy years ago. He was from, uh, I don't know, one of those Arab countries. Anyway, he said he felt sorry for American women. Well, I asked him why. American women are the freest in the world. They have more rights, more opportunities than women in any other country. He said no. American women have no one to protect them, to guide them. Well, uh, they're on their own. They're lost. And without protection, a woman gets hurt. He said that in his country, not only are women safe, they have power, real power. Power in the home, in the family. But sure, men have power outside of the home, in public, in the workplace, but women rule the home. And as I listened to him, and this guy had the beard and the whole nine yards, and I thought to myself, we call this guy backwards? He's making a lot more sense than we Americans are. My friend Bethany, Bethany and I go back to elementary school days. Well, her husband Stan lost his job last year and has been trying desperately to find a new one ever since, poor guy. Anyway, for years, Bethany worked part-time as a dietitian. She's full-time now for obvious reasons and is in fact the sole breadwinner at home. So now her income, which had always been supplementary vacation money, is in fact all there is. It's a situation I never thought any of my friends would have to face. So Bethany and I were chatting the other day and she said to me, you know, Emily, it was always really important to me that I got to work. And now I have to work. Being a dietitian, this labor of love today just feels like labor. And even though maybe it's Stan's turn to stay at home, I resent him for it. We continued and she gushed about how proud she was of me and how well I'm doing at the PR firm. And then she said to me, you know, Emily, you're really lucky. You get to choose to work. What Bethany fails to understand is that I too have to work for me. Emily loves to throw in my face this history of what it was like in America before women entered the workforce. First of all, I think women have always been part of the workforce. I don't know why we have to keep diminishing teachers and nurses. As if this country could survive without them. I mean, women are the nurturing sex after all. God forbid we bring biology into this conversation. Anyway, Emily says it was terrible for women that didn't work. They were completely dependent on their husband and marriage was another word for indentured servitude. They'd be trapped in abusive marriages with violent husbands and, and if they spoke up or left, they'd they'd be destitute, impoverished. I'm like, whoa, sweetheart, what does this have to do with me? With us. I don't want you to work, plain and simple. I make a good living. I want you to stay at home and, you know, be with me. I need you around. You know how many women would kill to have a husband like me? And what is this crap about abusive marriages? Have I ever hit you? Raised a hand to you? 
denied you anything you wanted? Do I not worship the ground you walk on? What? Wanting a full-time wife makes me a bad guy?